This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I think I've been starting every episode in exactly the same way, which is uh, recently I've moved into this new space and this and this is the problem, which is exactly the way I'm going to start this video as well. So yeah, recently I've moved into this new space, which has given me tons of room to grow. And most of the episodes have been busy work with trying to set up everything properly so that we can get back to doing creative things. And the issue that I'm experiencing right now is that this space, the yellow room, is also a storefront. Uh, my plan for it was to build out a tech lab. And I've been so busy with all of the other aspects to keep the video production up and running that I haven't really been able to deliver on that. So to actually make it look like a proper tech lab, we also need to sort out the lighting conditions. The only lighting I have in the space is video production lights and I can't just keep those running 24-7. And I was looking on Pinterest for lights and I came across this really intriguing design which would fit the space perfectly once it's all finished and it actually looks like a tech lab. The thing with this light is uh, it's designer and it looks really great, but it's a thousand euros and that's way outside of my budget. So I wanted to set out to create something similar and eventually I came across these tube lights from Green Ice and I just have a cable on one side and they look quite decent. So I thought to myself, let's do a one day build video, combine two of these tube lights and add some 3D printed components in the middle so that we have a baseline design for all of the lighting in this space. In general, I like the lights to look half respectable, of course, but also be extremely easy to put together and build so that I could produce quite a lot of them. And so I've ordered eight in this batch, but I'll be ordering quite a lot more if this project works out. They seem to be a little bit different from the picture that was on the page itself, mostly in regards to the out ends, which had these mounting solutions on there which could slide down. And I really appreciated this because I could take a Dremel to that and then actually snap them off. So the entire tube looks a lot cleaner like this. So after this, I took to the CAD and I started modeling out the diameter of the tube so that we can properly model our 3D printed components around here. And I've recently upgraded to this 13 inch iPad Pro instead of the 11 inch that you've been seeing for well, pretty much every single project on the channel. And the experience has been so much better in modeling stuff out on the channel right now. So if you're deciding between getting an iPad Pro 11 inch and an iPad Pro 13 inch, I can highly recommend going for the 13 inch. And I've actually been thinking of doing a full video where I compare both of them. So I still have the 11 inch M1 and now I have that 13 inch M5. And also in terms of performance, I'm really curious if the M5 can now handle a lot more 3D scans in Shape of 3D, for example. And this is the first design that I came up with. So very rectangular, uh, kind of matches the space in terms of theme. It has two side components, which bolt into the main component. And the main component at the rear actually has an extra gap so that the cables can be nicely routed upwards. So I 3D printed this one on the X1C and that first test component came out looking really decent. I thought this one would work straight away, but as soon as I put in the cable and put in the bolt that would squeeze the cable and hold it in place, I noticed that there wasn't enough like hold fast on the bolt itself. So we needed to go back to the design process implement a feature where there's a nut in place so that the bolt doesn't slip its threads. Now if you don't have a 3D printer or you'd like to make some higher end components, you can definitely check out today's sponsor, PCBWay. So PCBWay is a really high end manufacturing service which allows you to do PCB production and assembly, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course also 3D printing. So you can just upload the files, you get an instant quote for what something is going to cost, and a couple of days later those components arrive in your mailbox. So in terms of this project, it would have been really neat to send these off to PCBWay and 3D print them in a clear resin, for example. So definitely check them out. I left a link in the description down below and special thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this project. In general, the entire design that I came up with in the end is really quite crude. I imagine it more like, you know, if you look at this light in the corner of your eye, then it looks half decent. If you look too closely, it's not gonna look good at all, but you know, it's, it's a light. It's not something you'd be inspecting a whole lot. So if you're enjoying the video so far, then definitely consider leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel, and definitely check out the Patreon page as well. It really helps me out. All of the proceeds that come from the Patreon page go directly back into the channel, uh, providing me the means to you know, continue doing the projects. And I also really appreciate the feedback in the comment section. So definitely let me know if you have any ideas for the lighting situation in this space. I'm definitely not an expert and I'm having some trouble with it, as you can maybe tell. So video lighting, I really enjoy that, but actually lighting a space and actually making that feel decent and cozy and nice to look at, for some reason it just does not click with my brain and it doesn't work out too well. So I just bought some simple extension cords, cut those in half and stripped the wires so that we can connect them to this light. And after that I also cut the metal wire to a size that would be decent for hanging it off the ceiling. So some people in the comment section pointed out in some of my prior videos that you can make a coiled cable by wrapping it around a tube and leaving it there for a little while. I was thinking of adding heat so that it would actually coil up properly as well. 
but I just wrapped it around this tube, left it there for 24 hours, and then came back, removed it, and it seemed to work out really quite nicely, but after a little while, it did loosen up quite a lot, and it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. That might also have to do with the type of cable that I'm using and the diameter of the tube as well, so I already felt when I was wrapping it around it that it wasn't quite working too well. So of course we also need to mount this onto the seating and I went back to the CAD, designed this little component that would hook onto the tubes that I have mounted onto the ceiling, which I installed in a prior episode. These are pretty much scattered through the entire apartment so we can hang it up anywhere we want to and quickly move it out of the way as well. And these work in exactly the same way as the ones that are mounted onto the light with a little bolt that clamps onto the wire and that way you can adjust them as well. I'm also really open to hearing in the comment section how you would design a part like this as well. I think my design in this particular project was really quite crude. I have noticed though by taking stuff apart like drills and other electronical components that a lot of stuff in this world is really quite crude so I'm not sure if that's necessarily a bad thing but sometimes I feel like I'm missing some amount of knowledge in this regard. So here's the first iteration. I really just wanted to check out what it would look like and I placed one of the holding components in the middle of the light which made it seem really quite nice in my opinion like it's uh, balancing a little bit. In general I really like the look of it but there's certain components that really need some work like the cables at the back they need some kind of shell or a holder to hide the connection point over there as well. And I started off by measuring the cables so two of these are six millimeters and the top one was eight mil. I went to the CAD software and I created a little back plate which would hold on to the metal cable and in that way it would also keep the cables neatly organized. At first I thought this little box design could add to the design aesthetic in the hall. Uh, in the end though I think it might have been better to actually route the cables properly and put the proper extensions in place by unbolting the back of the lights and attaching a longer cable to that instead of connecting the wires together. Alongside that I adjusted the middle component a little bit so that the gap in the middle is a little bit larger and the cables will be able to go through a lot smoother. You also see that the print orientation is quite important on these components so in this case the print orientation isn't the same on all of the components and you can definitely see a difference over there as well. And I have actually thought about laser cutting the components out of multiplex to make the entire design a little bit more aesthetic which might also fit in the space because most of the desk setups in here are laser cut. So the two cables from the rear of the light actually squeeze all the way through the back end of the component and then I squeeze them together with the main wire and use some tape to wrap that all up and then put them inside of the enclosure, inside of that little box. In terms of the end result, I think we can really work with this and if we have a couple of these lights set up, we can probably make something really neat out of this space. And of course, this is the first iteration, so I'm wondering how we think about it two weeks from now and if we still like it, then we can produce a lot more of these and hang them up in the space. But for now, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some inspiration and hopefully see you in the next episode.